Bible prophecy is active and unfolding daily. Zechariah 12, Isaiah 17, Ezekiel 38. Here is what the lamestream media is not telling you. Shalom, my friends. Welcome to this week's newscast. Yes, I've had a haircut. <laughs> it's your job to guess which one. <laughs> From the Associated Press, following his meeting in Singapore with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un on Tuesday, President Trump told a press conference, quote, On the Iran deal, I think Iran is a different country now than it was three or four months ago. <laughs> I don't get that, but anyway, continuing his quote, I don't think they're looking so much to the Mediterranean. I don't think they're looking so much at Syria like they were with total confidence. I don't think they're so confident right now. But with that being said, I hope that at the appropriate time, after these sanctions kick in, and they are brutal, what we've put on Iran, I hope that they're going to come back and negotiate a real deal because I'd love to be able to do that. But right now, it's too soon for that. <laughs> Close quote. Iran? Negotiate a real deal? There's, there's too many contradictions in terms for that to make any sense. But... It's nice to see our president being hopeful. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu chimed in saying, quote, This is an important step in the effort to strip the Korean Peninsula of nuclear weaponry. President Trump is also taking a firm stance against Iran's attempt to attain nuclear weaponry, as well as its belligerence in the Middle East, close quote. Meanwhile, my friends, Iran is warning North Korea not to trust the United States. <laughs> if anyone thinks they understand anything about Iran or Korea or the entire Middle East situation, plural, singular, whatever, they have got to be drinking too much Kool-Aid. You just have to watch and wait. The only thing we can know is, you know, Bible prophecy that can be counted on. Anything else, you know, it's just, it's uh, silly to think anybody knows what's going on. From the Jerusalem Post, Iran is continuing to try to increase their efforts and capabilities to launch rockets from Syria and establish terror cells that can penetrate into Israel and harm communities in the Golan Heights. IDF Intelligence Directorate Major General Tamir Haman told the International Homeland Security Forum in Jerusalem on Wednesday, quote, The fact that they succeeded in launching rockets toward Israel, causing us to open shelters, is seen by them as a great success, even though it was a total failure operationally, close quote. In May... Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps fired a barrage of 32 missiles toward Israel, leading to Israel striking more than 50 Iranian targets in Syria in response. Turning to my personal thoughts. Second Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 14b through 16 reads, what partnership exists between right standing with Elohim and those who transgress Yahweh's codes of wisdom? In other words, how can light have fellowship with darkness? What harmony can there be between Mashiach, Yeshua, and Belial, the wicked one? Hashatan, Satan. What has a believer in common with an unbeliever? What have the wheat to do with tares? 
What union can there be between the Mishkan of Elohim and idols? For you are a Mishkan, a temple, of the living Elohim. And as Yahweh has said, quote, I will dwell in them, and I will walk among them. I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. <laughs> Sephaniah chapter 3, I forget which verse. Yahweh says, my people will know my name, and I will give them a clean lip. That's not just the Hebrew language. That's the Aramaic Hebrew Kadam, as it was back in the beginning, restored through the understanding of the pictographic odiot. Also, my friends, I quote Yehoshua, Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. As for me and this house, we will serve Yahweh. Turning to wars and rumors of wars, on Friday, June 15th from Ruda, after days of deadly clashes, ISIS has withdrawn from the key city of Al-Bukamal on the Euphrates River in Syria's Deir el-Zor province. ISIS launched consecutive attacks against regime forces and their allied Iranians and members of Lebanese Hezbollah in the Al-Bukamal area. At least 48 of the regime forces and their allies died in 72 hours of clashes. Then on Monday, June 18th, from Ynet News, Israel Air Force jets hit two Hamas military bases in Jabalia and Al-Shati and a weapons production facility in Gaza City early on Monday. During the strike, three rockets were fired from Gaza at Israel. The IDF spokesman's office said the strikes were in response to the incendiary and explosive balloons and kites <laughs> being launched at Israel from Gaza. The IDF spokesman's office also said the IDF is determined to continue acting with increasing force against these terror activities for as long as it takes and with a variety of tools until they stop. The Hamas terror organization is responsible for everything that happens in and from the Gaza Strip, and it will suffer the consequences. Close quote. Turning to our Intifada update on Monday, June 11th, from Ynet News, 18-year-old Shuva Malka was stabbed at a bus stop in the northern Israeli city of Afula by a 20-year-old Nur Shinawi of Jenin in the West Bank. Shinawi was arrested by police. Then on Wednesday, June 13th, from the Daily Mail, PA security forces fired stun grenades and tear gas to disperse an anti-government protest in Ramallah, in the West Bank, as hundreds demonstrated against PA punitive measures against Hamas-run Gaza. And from the Jerusalem Post, an Israeli Arab resident of Shuafat in East Jerusalem was critically injured in an explosion during an attempt to build a bomb. They found additional explosive material in the apartment and detained eight suspects for questioning. Then on Thursday, June 14th, from Ynet News, firefighters put out fires at 11 different locations along the Gaza border caused by incendiary kites launched into Israel from Gaza. 
From the Jerusalem Post, Israeli media reported that Israeli Arabs planned to launch 5,000 incendiary balloons and kites toward Israel from Gaza to mark the Eid al-Fitr holiday at the end of Ramadan. On Tuesday, Israel announced it was limiting the entrance of helium into Gaza. Helium balloons are capable of flying further than kites and can carry explosive devices like pipe bombs that are set off by cell phones once they approach their intended targets. Then on Friday, June 15th, from Haaretz, dozens of Israeli Arab demonstrators arrived at the Israel-Gaza border in the lowest turnout since the start of the border protests back on March 30th. On Sunday, June 17th, from Ynet News, police sappers were called to Moshav Beit Hagadi near Netivot after two balloons carrying objects landed in a residential backyard tree. An investigation revealed that the objects were incendiary devices. Three more balloons affixed with incendiary devices were found in a tree in the sub- suburbs of Stirot. From Haaretz, 17 fires started by burning kites broke out in Israel near the Gaza border. The fires resulted in the death of more than 1,000 turkeys at Kibbutz Ain Hashlosha due to smoke inhalation. The army believes... There must have been a lot of smoke, my friends. A thousand turkeys. The army believes that attacking groups launching the kites and balloons will result in too many casualties and that striking Hamas targets will be more effective in stopping the arson attacks. And now turning to our review of last week's news. President Trump told a press conference... I hope that after these sanctions on Iran kick in and they are brutal, I hope they're going to come back and (laughs) negotiate a real deal. Meanwhile, Iran is warning North Korea not to trust the United States. Iran is continuing to try to increase their efforts and capabilities to launch rockets from Syria and establish terror cells that can penetrate into Israel and harm communities in the Golan Heights. ISIS has withdrawn from the key city of Al-Bukamal on the Euphrates in Syria's Deir Ezzor province after launching consecutive attacks against regime forces, their allies, and members of Lebanese Hezbollah, with at least 48 of the regime forces and their allies having died in 72 hours of clashes. Israel Air Force jets hit two Hamas military bases in Jabalia and Al-Shati and a weapons production facility in Gaza City. An 18-year-old Israeli was stabbed at a bus stop in the northern Israeli city of Afula by a 20-year-old Israeli Arab. PA security forces fired stun grenades and tear gas to disperse anti-government protests in Ramallah in the West Bank. An Israeli Arab resident of Shuafat in East Jerusalem was critically injured in an explosion during an attempt to build a bomb. Firefighters put out fires at 11 different locations along the Gaza border caused by incendiary kites launched into Israel from Gaza. Police sappers were called to Moshav Beit Hagadi near Netivot after two balloons carrying objects landed in a residential backyard tree and 17 fires started by burning kites broke out in Israel near the Gaza border. And that, my friends is what the lamestream media is not telling you. Abba willing, I'll see you here again next week. Until then, keep your wicks trimmed and keep your lamps ablaze. Shalom, my friends. I need more.
and I can zoom. Enough is time alone with you underneath a naked moon, sharing confidential moods and making chatter. Mockingbird nocturnal sings notations of eternal things, entering the quantum breeze, flying not for want of wings. He lights his gaze on you and me simply because we matter.